So hi, welcome to another episode of Mike's Collection. I'm Mike, and uh, I've got a guest uh, today, my second guest ever, and this guy's actually here live with me yeah. in studio. This is uh, my it old... Came all the way. <laughs> yeah. My old friend, Andrew. Uh, yeah, Andrew, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, well, I've been friends with Mike since 2001, and I moved to Sackville. We started working together at Blockbuster. Uh, since then, uh, I'm, uh, I've been doing stand-up comedy for the last nine years in Halifax and around the country and stuff like that. And so when I have a little bit of money, I like to spend it on toys and stuff when I can waste it. It hasn't been a lot in the last few years, but uh, yeah. But, but because of you, I've had a bit of a toy collection. So Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, like, yeah, we met at Blockbuster. Yeah. And uh, yeah, when we first started talking, you told me that you used to be into... Yeah. Collecting toys and stuff as a kid, and then, yeah, I'd like to think I maybe reawakened that passion a little bit. Yeah, because like even like I liked it when I was like 13, 14, when most kids were just like, "Why the hell are you still collecting toys?" So then yeah. I just stopped, and you were like, yeah, "You can do it if you want to." Like, you know? and so then I just started buying wrestling toys. Was what we started out with, yeah. and then from there it was just everything and anything. So yeah, and so you mentioned you do stand up comedy yeah. now. Do you want to plug any of your websites? Uh, like? Yeah, you can check us uh, check out my website. It's andrewvoncomedy.ca. It's got all my dates on there. It's depressing right now, but they, there are more of them from time to time. Uh, you can just check me out there, and it's got a link to everything else that you could find about me, any clips, any podcasts, anything like that are all in there. So. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to shoot yeah. this a little bit, but yeah. I feel like maybe I'm hogging it. Okay. Here we go. Yeah. All right, so I've been wanting to have one of my friends on my show for a long time. Andrew was really my only other friend, and besides my brother, Doug, that I actually collect yeah. toys. So it made the most sense to bring you on here to talk about stuff. But yeah, picking a topic is difficult. Yeah. Um, especially since we don't collect a lot of the same things. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah. For or while. if we do, you have just substantially much more than I do and, and a more knowledge about it than I do. So I'm just like, yeah, I just buy what I like when I see something I like. So. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, so we were hanging out there a week or two ago, mm-hmm. and we were talking about what we were going to do f- for our episode of the show, and we had decided on probably the most difficult topic, because <laughs> um, yeah, I spent a lot of time thinking about this. So we decided to do the top 10 toys in our collection. Yeah. So our 10 favorite toys. Mm-hmm. Um, and I kind of use the same criteria a little bit as when I do my, my top 10 list every year on my blog. It's just not necessarily the most, you know, the 10 best, like most expensive or the most detailed. It's uh, a very loose criteria of what I like have a personal attachment to. Sometimes the, the quality of the actual toy factors in, but more more often than not, it's just the like nostalgic ties I have to this character. I see. I was when I was making my list, I was wondering because that's a lot of how I got my list was mm-hmm. basically. You know, uh, my emotional ties or my nostalgia to the character or something like that. I was thinking you were going to have like, oh, this is technically the best <laughs> out of this series. Just because you know so much more about it and have a bigger collection. But I'm glad we're kind of on the same wavelength. Too. Yeah, like I think yeah. we haven't discussed our list. I think no. I can kind of see what you brought yeah. over there. You can kind of see what I got over yeah. here. But uh, yeah, it's definitely not like the most high-end, best yeah. sculpted toys that I have. Because I I have most of my childhood toys that I had as a kid and you know like I was even wondering like man I I could put my stuffed mouse Mac my favorite stuffed animal almost on here he's the one I had the most yeah personal sentimental attachment to but I'm like well we decided to keep this action figures Mm -hmm. so yeah these are the top 10 action figures in my collection but yeah I could have I could have spent forever on this well even the most like expensive toy I have didn't even make the list yeah, me neither. I was like, I felt like it should have at some point because I spent so much money on this thing. But, uh, yeah, yeah it, was, it was tough because mm-hmm. like I've compiled some lists of like my top ten GI Joes. Um, I just, I think the only one I've actually posted a video of is I did. I was going to do a list of the top ten Masters of the Universe classic yeah. figures. But when I started doing that list, I was like, this is way too hard. There's too many figures I like, so I, I expanded it to the top. I think I did top fifteen. And then even then, it was so difficult, I said, okay, you know what, I'm going to split this into two lists, and I'm going to do the top 15 Master of the Universe classics that are based on the vintage toy line, and then, and that's the one that you can find online. But I have a list ready for another video I'm going to do, kind of a companion video, which is the top 15 Master of the Universe classics, oh. not based on another yeah. original property. So either brand new figures or figures that are based on that old cartoon that never had toys before, yeah. and that sort of thing. So like... 
I couldn't even <laughs> I had to pick 30 out of a toy line that I probably yeah. only have 100 of. And see, one of the things I did is I tried to represent, like, I tried to pick something to represent, like, different types of toys and different yeah. and different brands. For you, like, for you, like, I picked, there's something on my list from G.I. Joe. I'm sure you do, too. But I'm just like, I don't know how you could pick G.I. Joe out of the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of G.I. Joe that you have and be like, this is the one. Unless you're talking about, like you said, personal attachment and stuff to it. Yeah. Well, that's it. Well, G.I. Joe is probably my, my favorite all-time toy brand. Mm-hmm. And G.I. Joe is the toy line I played with the most when I was a kid. Like, hours and hours, hundreds of hours mm-hmm. of time with these toys. And so when you see my list, it is pretty diverse. It's not full of G.I. Joes. And, you know, so is it a true list? Like, did I really like this toy more than those G.I. Joes I spent way more time playing with? Yeah. Um... Not necessarily, but I just didn't want my whole list to be of G.I. Yeah. Joe's. I, yeah. I still think I was pretty honest. I still picked toys that mean a lot to me. But there, I was thinking a little bit to try and keep this a little bit diverse and not just put yeah. 10 G.I. Joe's on my best toy list. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, so... Uh, I, 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 I got to admit something, though. Mm-hmm. Um, I did bring two honorable mentions that didn't make the list. That's fine. That were close to the... That were, that were like, ones that I cut out last. So I, I technically had 12 with me. So that's okay. I'll let you do your honor- honorable mentions. I won't bother to okay. do any, but it's partly because like I'm in my home territory here. And yeah. My, my pile of toys that I've got over here is much bigger than yours, just because I've planned with like if I show you a toy, I can show you another version of it or yes. a comparison yeah. where you don't have all that. Yeah. Because so, I had to bring mine with me. Yeah, I probably will yeah. talk longer about each category as we go through. So yeah. if you want to start with your honorable mentions, sure. I'll grab them here. All right. Uh, so these are my two honorable mentions. Uh, I, these are just figures that I really like, and I like like I have them on display in my house. I see them all the time, and I, just because they're characters I really love. Uh, and the first one is this Butters uh, from South Park figure. And if you notice, he's wearing the yep. uh, the the hockey mask from the famous scene from Mad Max where they parody uh, um, uh, Lord Humongous. Lord Humongous. And uh, just walk away. And the one I th- that's why I wanted to put this on an honorable mention. It's not that it's like the greatest figure, but I it is Butters, and I love. Oh, what's on? Uh, I do love Butters, but I like that they threw in something like that for the fans, like this little like nod to just this one scene from the show. Yeah, here I'm gonna prop yep. him up a little bit. We tried to rig up this thing here so we could show off these toys, yeah. but he's a pretty small toy, so there you, there you go. And they also um, released with it, which I didn't bring with me, but I thought it was really cool. Because it's just a little piece of cardboard, but it's the drawn photo of him with Osimo yeah. as best friend. So I, I, I just felt like it was an honorable mention. Like, it's not a lot of detail. It's not a crazy figure, but Butters is my favorite South Park character. Mine too. And I like the little extra add-ons for the fans. Because a lot of people see that and go, why is Butters wearing a hockey mask? They don't even remember what it's what it's about. So. Yeah, no, that was a great episode yeah. where the boys built a... Or the yeah. girls built a fortress or something, and the boys were trying to get in the yeah. fortress. And it mimicked a scene from Road Warrior. Yeah. And, yeah, the bad guy in Road Warrior, Lord Humongous, showed up in this mask. And he had that imposing voice yeah gets on the microphone and tells him just to, walk away <laughs> yeah, and, so, and they just play that clip in the show yeah so when butters puts on the mask and he gets on the mic you expect him to sound like butters but he yeah. sounds exactly like lord among us it was, it was a good episode so yeah that's, it's a good pick that was one and my other honorable mention was you'll be able to name the brand that these are from i forget the actual official name but this is dark side um and it's the old meza style is it Migo. Migo styles yeah and i just really I don't know why. I really like that figure. Like it's it's a neat little dark side. It's um, I, I like dark side a lot, and I have a few dark side figures, which some of them are really good quality, some aren't. Yeah. Um, this is just a classic Super Friends look, uh, and he's just nice to have on display. I find it's I just really like that style of figuring. Yeah, I like them too. I have a few of these, uh-huh. uh, and I don't know the name of the company in other than because uh, I think even Mego might have redone some of these on yeah. their own. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. But, uh, yeah, I know, like, Marvel did some, like, Toy Biz did some of that stuff. Yeah. Like, famous covers. Uh, but, yeah, I'm not sure who took up the DC ones here. Mm. Uh, and it's just the plain, basic dark side look, which is nice, the blue and the gray. It's not, It's not like, the, the you know, Omega sort of symbol on his chest or anything like that overdoing yeah, it. Yeah, like the, a, a the very very dark clean. side doesn't look as... Yeah, exactly. It's, but it's just the iconic sort of uh, Jack Kirby look, so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, those Thanks. are my two honorable mentions. <laughs> All right, fair enough. So yeah. let's move on to number 10. Yep. Yeah. So I'll start with mine. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so my choice for number 10 best action figure in my collection. Again, this is very hard to do. Mm-hmm. But So I've got this guy here, which is 
Let me just say you can see him before I start talking about him. <laughs> yeah. So here he is. Oh, okay, yeah. So this here, his technically his name is Salmore. Um, but really what he is is he's Psy Kill. Okay. Now uh, I don't know if you had much GoBots when you were a kid. No, I did not have a lot of GoBots when I was a kid. So Psy uh, GoBots were like the shittier Transformers. Yeah. Like they're made by a different company, but same idea. They were transforming vehicles to robots and uh they were usually much simpler and much smaller toys so here's my vintage side kill figure this was oh, basically okay. the megatron of gobots he was yeah. the evil bad guy and uh so you see him there and he's busted he's missing an arm yeah yeah i don't have too many of my vintage gobots but i did keep side kill and when i was making this list like i'm a big transformers fan but trying to think of which transformers toy like, would make my best toy list. Mm -hmm. It was really tough because I found vintage Transformers never lived up to what I wanted them to be. Part of the reason why I got rid of most of my vintage Transformers toys when I turned, like, 12 or 13 was because I didn't play with them as much as G.I. Joe. Like, I loved the actual figure of G.I. Yeah. Joe figures. But with Transformers, I loved the character, maybe from the cartoon, maybe from the comic. But the toy was usually just this... Oh, they were so clunky and awkward. Yeah, sometimes and... their arms were just little nubs that came out. They didn't have yeah. any... They didn't bend at the knees, the arm, the leg, you know, the head didn't turn. It was just this block of plastic. Yeah. And it was very disappointing. And now they've come a long way with modern Transformers. But I find they reuse a lot of parts. So it would be hard for me to pick... Like, one of my favorite all-time Transformers is First Aid, who's an ambulance. And mm -hmm. they made him recently as part of the Combiner Wars... But then they reused his body to make multiple more characters. So it's like, even though I have a lot of attachment to that character, it's like the figure itself is kind of not very unique at all. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so I'm kind of surprised. This is the only Transformer on my list. And, and for it's one, a GoBot. It's not a Transformer. <laughs> and two, it's not even an officially licensed Transformer. Oh, it's not? Okay. This is one of those uh, like third-party Transformers yeah. which have been really popular since, I guess, I don't know, the last 10 years or so. So these companies that aren't licensed by Hasbro or anything make Transformer toys. They give them different names. They can't call them Optimus Prime because they probably get sued or something, but they call them like mm -hmm. Optimus Prom or something, <laughs> and they make this really nice toy. They tend to be more expensive because yeah. they're made in limited quantities and they're kind of for a collector market. So yeah, this here was the third party. It was made by a company called DX9, okay. and yeah, this, this came out in 2014. And the reason I chose it over some of the other third-party Transformers I have of actual Transformer characters, because I do have some really nice ones, yeah. is I think comparatively to the old toy, this one is the most extreme improvement. Yeah. Like, my third-party version of Gears as a Transformer I really like looks really nice, but the vintage one, I still kind of like it too. It's, like, it's a cute little toy and I still enjoy it. This side kill... You know, he's just very small. He doesn't move much. You know, he's he's not menacing looking mm -hmm. in any sort of way. And they just really up the ante with this guy here. Like, he's got these big spike covers on yeah. his wheels. He's bigger. Like, he can stand next to my Megatron figure now. And he looks like he could challenge him for being yeah. the leader of the Decepticons. I like uh, the, uh, this, like... Uh, the material that the guns and the uh, chrome stuff was sort of made out of his body is a nice shine to it. Yeah, well, it doesn't look plasticky and fake. It looks, it looks of a higher quality than what you would just go to Walmart and pick up. Exactly. Like most vintage Transformers and GoBots did have some sort yeah. of die cast yeah. metal, and they don't do that anymore, really. So yeah, the fact that you get that chromey die cast yeah. there as well. Um, the tires is real rubber. Like, oh, the tires. cool. cool. Um, yeah, I just think this guy looks really cool. He's a character that I really like, and they finally did him, I feel, like, the justice that he deserved. Yeah. And, yeah. So, of all the transforming toys I have in my collection... That's the one that I, made it. <laughs> he's the one that made it. And also, what I was saying about, like, first aid and stuff, this guy is completely unique. Now, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if DX9 re-released this guy in different colors, trying to make the most money out of, the, the yeah. you know, what they invested into making this. I don't know that they have, for sure. But, like, nothing else on my shelf looks like him. Yeah. Almost every Transformer I have has been repainted multiple times so they end up looking all like clones of one another but this guy is it's, very unique and yeah. on his own oh that's cool that i like that figure that's a great figure so uh you mike knows i'm a huge wrestling fan I've been watching wrestling my entire life like i mentioned earlier when i got back into figure collecting it was started with wrestling yeah and i always love collecting wrestling toys as long as they're good mm -hmm. for the most part a lot of them aren't like even if they yeah. 
the women toys are the worst. The women never look like the, their face. Uh, and some of the $14 ones at Walmart, they just got the stiff body. It's just, they're, they're not great figures. But a little while ago, I wanted to pick one wrestling figure to represent for my collection that I like. And a little while ago, I got this guy in uh, Ontario. And this is part of the WWF's, or WWE, sorry, their Monsters line. And this is Triple H as a zombie. And they've done a few of these different guys there. Oh, he'll get them there for me. And the one... I. They're not like the world's greatest figures. Obviously, there's not a lot of articulation and stuff. I think it's meant more for a collector to have on their shelf than it is for maybe a kid yeah. to want to play with. But I love the little things like the torn skin. You can take his crown off, and he has like uh, like a torn brain, like skin with yeah. the skull underneath of it. The one thing I also love about this figure is. Triple H has torn his quad many, many times in wrestling. Yeah. His quad muscle is almost a joke. So what did they do with the torn ripped flesh? Is It's his quad muscle. Oh, yeah. So I thought that was kind of neat. Uh, Undertaker has one too where he's got ripped flesh. But the, the one I would, would love, which would have replaced it if I had it from this collection in this series, yeah. was the Hulk Hogan. Yeah, it's hard to get. Uh, it's hard to get. And you know how the classic Hulk Hogan would rip his shirt open? This one, he's ripping his flesh. Okay. So it's got kind of a neat... You know, play on that classic stuff. Now, the rest of the lines, I find when they stray away from the zombies and they go into, like, the uh, aliens, and yeah. it's not as good. Uh, I feel like they would they would have just stuck and called it, like, WWE Zombies, and they all looked kind of like this, that it would have been a line that probably would still be making new toys of today yeah. uh, for collectors. And it's a simple little toy, but I, I like it, and it's a, it's a unique wrestling toy. That's why I like it. It's different than just having a Triple H, so. Yeah. Yeah. I think, it, like... I have seen these things around. Mm -hmm. um, for one, I'm not as big a wrestling fan as you. Like, yeah. I liked it back in the, the whole Hogan days in the 80s, but I kind of lost interest. Um, and wrestling toys I haven't been into since I was a little kid either. Like, this isn't my cup of tea, mm -hmm. especially for a character like Triple H. But I think it would maybe work for, like, if a character... I could see a character, like, say, Demolition. Oh, that, yeah. If they, if they, not turn them into monsters so much, but, like, just amp them up to the fantasy version of it and gave them, like, more, like, gladiator style like that. Yeah. So I get how you veering these things into fantasy could be appealing, mm -hmm. even though, you know, I'm just not really a fan of zombie Triple H yeah. or whatever. But, yeah, I get it. And it is a nice-looking figure. Yeah, it's very well... And for a $15 figure at Toys R Us, it's not... There's not a lot of paint problems with it or anything yeah. like that it's very i mean he doesn't like it doesn't have a ton of articulation but i don't think they expected anybody to be playing with him no. so yeah he's got, uh, moves at the elbow I yeah. yeah yeah so he's got a little bit but not like and uh i just yeah i just like the detail on the ripped uh, on his face for that cheap of a figure and the ripped flesh and yeah, it is unfortunate the legs don't go out yeah you can't spread them at all which yeah kind of hinders his wrestling maneuvers I guess. yeah <laughs> yeah yeah so that was my number 10 all right, so move on to my number nine. Sure. Okay, so my number nine, and this was a kind of a surprise to me even when I was putting my list together, is Mantis from yeah. the Superpowers line. Now, you have already put uh, Darkseid up here. Now, yeah. this is another one of Jack Kirby's new gods, mm -hmm. and it was my first introduction to them. Uh, like, the Superpowers line was, like, the really only premier like DC toy line of the eighties. If you wanted Superman and Batman, you kind of had to go through superpowers. Like, do you did you have any of these guys? Uh, yeah, I had like a few of them. Yeah, yeah, and they were like they're super crisp. They look like they just came off of an animation cell. The colors really pop. Like the they all had little superpowers. Like this guy, yeah. he just squeezes legs in his arms. Oh, that's awesome. And, like, <laughs> a lot of them had that. Like Superman yeah. did that. Flash, if he squeezed his arms, his legs would go back and oh, forth okay. and stuff. And uh, this guy here, um, I don't remember who gave it to me. So he's still in really good condition. Yeah, like he yeah. looks great. And this is my original one from like 1984 or something or whatever yeah. it was. Like, And uh, so when I was a little kid, this is back when I still lived in like Ontario. I was probably in grade like one or two. And uh, I had a birthday party where my friends came over. And I was probably, you know, wanting G.I. Joe's and He-Man's or whatever. But I opened this guy up and he was a superpower mantis i'd never heard of him i didn't have any other superpower figures and i was just immediately like intrigued with this character and like i love bugs mm -hmm. um me and my brother doug had a pet praying mantis for a while and so when i saw this guy who's you know i guess based on a praying mantis yeah colors is definitely the name and the colors definitely kind of indicate that and he was described on the package as an energy vampire and you see he's got these kind of like yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
And so, yeah, he's very bug-like, energy vampire, very colorful, very muscly, and I just loved this guy, and I didn't really know what to do with him. So, this is kind of what I was talking about where I said, just, do I really like this figure more than a G.I. Joe I played with a thousand times when I didn't play with this guy nearly as much? But as far as the impact he had on me, I just, I thought he was so cool, and what me and my brother used to do a lot with toys that we didn't have, like, whole lines of, like, we had one Voltron figure mm-hmm. each, and this guy and some adventure people from Fisher Price. We had our, all of our G.I. Joe's were in a shoebox, our Transformers were in a shoebox under the bed, but then we had a drawer in our dresser, which we just call our figure drawer, which is where all the miscellaneous figures went. And we would have just, we almost felt bad like they weren't getting played with, so we made sure to have action figure, like Battle Royale, (laughs) and we'd dump out the figure drawer, and any miscellaneous thing from Little Green Army Men to Voltron to Mantis, they'd all have to fight in this Battle Royale, and they gave these like kind of odds and ends toys to develop their own personalities. And he was always like a contender in my, yeah. in my figure drawer battle Royale. Uh, I tried to integrate him into whatever toy lines I was playing with. I'm sure my GI Joe's had to fight him a few times. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I really wanted to know more about this character. Unfortunately, when I found out what he really looked like in the comic books, he's really lame looking. Yeah. Like, you know yeah. Oh like? yeah. Yeah. Like he's a Jack Kirby design, so I don't want to shit on him yeah. too much, but he's just a guy wearing a basically an all green bodysuit. With like a yellow spiky mask. Yeah. <laughs> and he's not at all a bug or anything like that. Um, which is kind of a bummer. But then what was really cool is a couple of years ago they made a new version oh, yeah. of this version of the toy. Oh, yeah. And so I was really happy to get an updated version of this guy. Oh, that's a great, yeah. Very true to the original. But it's just, I still think this guy looks better in like a more, you know, just a toy... Oh, oh, yeah, the playability story. yeah, factor. And the playability. Like, I'm just saying, I never played with this toy. I got yeah. it as a guy in my 20s or 30s or something. Whereas this guy I played with so much as a kid, yeah. And, yeah. And well, the good thing about I think about those little figures and stuff, especially from back those the durability for, for, for playing. Like, yeah, we lost arms and limbs from those guys, but... I think there's something nice about just how little articulation and kind of what they are, and they're, yet yeah, they're still able, to, uh, when we were kids, you were still able to have a good time with them. Like, you didn't need all these joints and all this stuff and opening hands and shit to, yeah. Well, this guy here, for example, he, he's got articulated uh, ankles, Yeah. and he falls over all the time. Like, I've got him on, he didn't come with a display base, I've got him standing on some G.I. Joe stands, which yeah. keep him up, but he still topples over and brings everybody on the shelf down with him. Yeah. You know, and that's the problem with some of these newer articulated toys, they... Uh, they're just not sturdy like these old toys that were meant to go in the sandbox yeah, and the yeah. tub and all that stuff. So, yeah. Another just cool little thing before I get rid of him. Oh, yeah, yeah. When, apparently, they decided to make the superpowers toy line and they wanted to put out more characters than the ones that just kids knew, like Flash and Superman, they decided to go with the New Gods, which were kind of a weird little fringe, you know, DC comic at the time. And they thought some of them, like Mantis, didn't necessarily, wouldn't grab kids' attention. So they actually asked Jack Kirby to redesign the characters uh, into a more toyetic look. Uh, okay. So this is not like some jerk took like a Jack Kirby classic and transformed it into something yeah. totally different. Jack Kirby did this on his own. Oh, okay. And, uh, yeah. If this oh, that's guy, cool. If this look had carried over into the comic books, which as far as I know, it never did. Yeah. This guy would probably be my favorite DC yeah. character of all time. But yeah, as far as I know, Mantis still looks mm. like a DC no. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so oh, that's, that's my cool. number nine. I like so that one. Let's yeah. move on to yours. All right. So my number nine is I wanted to pick a GI Joe. Now, unlike you, I I what I wasn't huge into GI Joe as a little kid. More of a He Man type of guy. So it yep. wasn't until I started hanging out with you that um, you got me into GI Joe, and I started reading some of the comics, watching some of the older cartoons and stuff, and really got to understand what a rich kind of universe that was full of colorful characters and different yep. stuff like that. So that's why I chose. This is my favorite GI Joe figure that I have. And it's the Cobra Bat. I think it is such a well-designed and well... Like, there's so many things going on with this figure. The the, the little intricacies on the, on the plate on his chest in there. Yeah. Uh, the details of his arm and the electronics in the back and stuff. I just... I know it's just a bat, but there's something about this figure. And the color, I think, really helps. The, the silver and the, the yellow and the black just really help the color pop of the figure. Yeah. And so it's always been... I don't even have a lot of my G.I. Joes on display right now because I don't have the space to do it. But this guy's always on a shelf with somebody. Just because it's my all-time favorite G.I. Joe figure that I got. And again, one because I probably wouldn't even known the character existed or was this cool until we started hanging out and talking yeah. more about G.I. Joe and stuff. So... 
Yeah. That's, that's yeah. why I like him a lot. Yeah, he's great. Like, I had the original Bat, which I think mm-hmm. came out in 86. And yeah, he had a little lenticular sticker on his chest that had, like, yeah. all these gears and stuff in it. And he had the swappable hand, so you could replace his hand. He, with this it. figure does, too, so, I yeah, think. He's got the yeah, clock. Yeah, yeah. And in his backpack, he actually stores the extras. So there's, like, a, I think, a flamethrower and a grenade yeah. launcher, and you can swap those out. Which I will say, I love that they fit in that backpack, too, because I'm always losing accessories in a move, but those ones are nicely snug and tight. <laughs> and his, he actually has a hand. You still yeah. That? Is that in there, too? Uh, I don't. I might have lost that. If you didn't realize this, but, yeah, in the backpack, there's a little compartment there. Oh. And you can actually tuck the extra hand in there when you're not uh, using okay. the hand, which is kind of, again, kind of neat. But, yeah, I agree, like... Bat, which I think the whole reason they invented the bats is so they could kill soldiers on TV. Because, and they're just robots. They just yeah, because they're the yeah. battle android trooper. Yeah. That's what bats stood for. And they wanted G.I. Joe to be able to shoot somebody, and they couldn't kill the guy, you know, the Cobra soldiers. So they came up with the bats. And it was a great toy then. And when they started this modern era of G.I. Joe's in 2007, I really think the bat was probably the most successful from those first couple of years mm-hmm. in that it looks exactly what you'd want the original one to look like but it is better like the proportions are better where the older one was a little stubby yeah the lenticular sticker instead of being a sticker now it's actually sculpted yeah. pieces in there uh, yeah everything about the case <laughs> the dog, dog likes it too yeah <laughs> but uh yeah it's a great looking figure i think uh very good pick. Yeah, it's a, he might not be like the most interesting GI Joe character, but it's just it's such a well done uh, figure. That's why I wanted to go with that one. Yeah, yeah. Maybe one like it could have very easily been one of my picks too, except I think I've gotten so many of them, it's kind of watered it down. So yeah, I have about thirty of these. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's a great. All pick. different colors and different designs too. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so yeah, we're we'll on eight. number eight. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. <laughs> My number eight selection is this Green Goblin figure. Oh, uh, okay. And this is from 1994, um, made by Toy Biz, which made all the Marvel figures in the 90s based on the Spider-Man animated series. Yes, yeah. And the X-Men like animated series and the short-lived Iron Man and Silver Surfer series. They, they did all the toys. Um, and I loved those toys, partly because like, I was a huge Marvel geek from the year of, like, when I was in... Eight years old or so is when I really discovered Marvel, and I would flick through all these books. I had the Marvel uh, like hand mm-hmm. official handbook, and it was just like an encyclopedia of all the Marvel characters. And I so I very very early learned how many characters there were, like hundreds and hundreds in the Marvel universe. And I wanted toys of all of them, and there were none because yeah. there was like the Marvel had a Secret Wars toy line, but even that had come kind of come and gone by then. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, there was literally nothing. It might seem crazy to say now, because now there's Avengers stuff <laughs> everywhere you yeah. look. But at the time, like, yeah, you couldn't get a Spider-Man figure, let alone a shooting star figure or, mm-hmm. like, some rando Marvel character. So me and my brother end up making all these characters in paper dolls and no, play yeah. with them as paper dolls, because that's when we could get these characters. So when these comic, when these cartoons aired in the 90s, I was probably a little too old for it already at that point. Mm-hmm. But the toys started coming out. And I was just so stoked that these things were finally being made into toy form. And, uh, yeah, so Green Goblin here, I think, is kind of the perfect yeah. version of It's Green exactly Goblin. like it, it, what you would expect. It's the iconic Green Goblin look. Yeah, yeah, like, it's classic. But even, like, when Green Goblin first appeared in the comic books, he was, like, maybe a little wiry and a little bit more like a mm-hmm. <laughs> little imp. Um and then other versions of them, like more modern versions, they've kind of made them almost look like an orc from Lord of the Rings, like giving them a more... Yeah, look. more... Yeah. Which I don't mind that either. I think he kind of does need that to be considered menacing still, because this the little, little goblin in short shorts doesn't really yeah. s- strike fear anymore. Oh well, yeah, even in like uh, Into the Spider-Verse, he's this giant... And yeah. I know that they take a lot of liberties with the characters and that, but yeah, he's a giant loser, almost a, like a goblin with a big tongue and everything like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. monstrous. Yeah, which I don't really like that take. Mm-hmm. I want to see this green goblin on screen. It doesn't have to look exactly like this, but like in a real goblin suit. Yeah, like that one in the Tobey Maguire movies didn't work. For no, me. no, and then the whatever that was in the <laughs> Andrew Garfield movies, just make him a goblin. Mm-hmm. And Goblin has been my favorite Spider-Man villain. Always been one of my. I favorite. forgot that there was one in the Andrew Garfield one until he brought it. Yeah, up. <laughs> it was that 
ding, 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 oh yeah, that was bad. <laughs> that was bad. He just basically had spiky hair yeah. and fangs. It was <laughs> yeah. garbage. Um, and yeah, so there's a lot of these toy biz characters have been redone by Marvel Legends in recent years, yeah. and it's always a like, oh sweet, this is an upgrade. Like every version I keep getting is better and better. But with these toy biz figures, there's a couple that I think they just nailed the perfect iconic look. Like, the musculature, the size of this guy, the look of him. Like, he's not, like, the crazy version of the Goblin. He's not the scrawny version of the Goblin. He's not the hulked-out version of the Goblin. It's just the perfect version yeah. of the Goblin. The uh, one you can you, you sort of see when you picture in your head, like, classic Spider-Man covers with, with the Green Goblin. Yeah. Right. yeah. And I just... In comparison. Not really as a comparison or anything, but... Well, I was digging in the bin to get him out for this review. I had this one growing up. But this guy, I feel the same way about. Like I just yeah, got a great figure. I just got a new Scorpion as part of the Far From Home. Wave. Yes, yeah. And it's a nice figure, but I still don't think it's as good a figure. Like if my house was burned down and somebody said, "Grab your favorite Scorpion <laughs> figure," I think I'd still have to go with this one. Like it's just the look of them. It's just a uh, classic. And again, not necessarily classic by meaning like it looks like his first appearance or anything like that. It's just the best. Like amalgamation of all the various versions of Scorpion that have come around, and I just think he looks great. I don't think they can improve on it. And yeah, so even though I have Marvel Legends figures of these guys from just the last year or two, mm-hmm. I still think these guys are much. Better. Oh yeah, they're great figures. To me, it brings back the real '90s feel. Like you know, and I think of those Spider-Man cartoons yeah. and the X-Men cartoons and stuff. And the other ones, like you mentioned, were not so popular. But uh, yeah, they're just they're very classic. Like the thing I like with the Green Goblin and the Scorpion ones too is that they're not too updated. Like they didn't get crazy and trying to like do anything mo- like like that was the same series with the Vulture where he was. Yeah, but even the Vulture toy was of young Vulture. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure in the cartoon they had Vulture as the old. Man. Oh yeah, yeah. And but there was a storyline in the comic books for he you know right, turned yeah, young yeah. for like an issue or two. And they happen to choose to make the figure of young. Oh, okay. I just I just like that these even if there's like slight changes with some of these characters, not much with the Green Goblin, but you know it still feels like you're getting a classic figure of them. Yeah. 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 All right. So we'll move on to your number eight. I think. Sure. All right. Uh, my number eight. I can't tell you what line of Transformers this comes from because I don't remember. It's one I bought a long time ago. But I love Soundwave. It's mm-hmm. always been one of my favorite Transformers. Going back to the eight, like I'm born in '83, the Ghetto Blaster to me is just this iconic thing, and it would change into this big Transformer, and he's mm-hmm. just—I loved the character so much. Now I understand in, in later years why they got rid of the, the Ghetto deck. Blaster and the tape deck. It's hard to explain to kids what the hell a tape deck is yeah. and what tapes are. The problem is a lot of I find. Uh, sound waves they 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 put out they would try to do different and weird things with and now he's not a this he's a that this one it, i think it just transforms into a jeep i, I haven't had it in it's kind of like a cybertronian tank yeah tank but i just like how it's the closest looking it's one of the closest looking to the tape deck type of style without actually having the tape deck yeah and his chest and it might not be the best sound wave figure it's just the only one in my collection that I have, I have a like, cartoony kind of bulky one. Yeah. But other than that, I like this one because it kind of fits in with the modern style Transformers, and it reminds me a lot of his nostalgic look from the eighties. Yeah, like the one, the cartoony one has the guitar, isn't it? The yes. One yeah. Yeah. Prime or something. Yeah. Um, it's funny. Like I didn't know you were going to bring this toy, but I, I posted another video just earlier today. Oh, okay. Um, where I was just trying to catch up on because I knew you were coming over and yeah. we were going to do this video, and I still had I recorded all the new toys I'd bought in the last week or two, and I was like, I got to get this up before I shoot this new mm-hmm. video. And I got the newest version of Soundwave. Oh, okay. Uh, and I brought this. I have this same toy, and I brought it out for comparison. Oh, okay. And I said the same thing. Like when I was buying Transformer toys, now, uh, you know, in the modern era as a grown up, this was my default Soundwave for the longest time because I thought, you know, he's got the face, he's got the colors, you know, the chest plate there kind of looks enough like yeah. the classic Soundwave. And for years, I've been wanting a like a better Soundwave that mm-hmm. was more tape decky. Yeah, um, but had a lot of the what this one offers, and there've been plenty, but they're usually like really expensive. Like yeah, the third party ones or the masterpiece ones, you got to spend like two to three hundred dollars to get like a really nice one. <laughs> and I, you might have saw on here when I was cleaning yeah, my desk. Yeah, but let me just grab it. Right yeah. Here. Yeah. So here's the. Oh yeah, siege that's a great yeah version. Yeah, and he doesn't transform into a tape deck either. But, but you can just leave him like, like that. He's yeah. still got the buttons that you have to play. He's still yeah. got the eject. Uh, oh, that is great. So, yeah. 
this, uh, you know, if you if you ever up if you're a I would, yeah, fan, yeah. you might want to upgrade this guy because yeah. he just came out. Oh, okay. Um, so yeah, you'll find him. I get him at EB Games for thirty five bucks. Oh, so, sweet! Yeah, very nice figure. That's not too expensive for a good figure like that. For yeah, a Transformers. I like all the scuffing up on it too. It, was, it looks war damaged. Or, yeah, I yeah. can show you after. But I get the, the that Optimus Prime. Oh, okay. It's from Siege as well as well. I've got a Star Scream over there. Who's yeah. from Siege, and yeah, they really are. Um, getting it right yeah um because i've been there's been a lot of nice ones over the last few years of characters well this this is why i liked this figure is like you said getting it right is this is there's so many that it's just like okay if you're not going to do the tape deck just get it as close as you could possibly get and for me when i saw this one i was like well this is all i need for my collection but i do like Soundwave enough that i probably would buy that um to go along with them you can't ever have too many sound waves i've got a few (laughs) yeah yeah, yeah. all right right. cool all right so my number seven is Zorana. Ah, yes. So she is a G.I. Joe. Uh, she's a member of the Cobra, like, sub-team, the Dreadnoughts, led by Zartan, which is kind of like a group of bikers. Yeah. Um, now, she was a favorite character of mine from my youth, and I'm, I've got the vintage Zoran here. <laughs> I, I doubt she'll be able to stand up, because she's so, her legs are so wobbly here. But yeah, so there's the vintage Zorana figure. Uh, and I loved this figure. I loved this character um, because she was like probably my first punk rock girl. Crush. Yeah. Like I love punk rock girls and Zoran is probably the one that introduced me to that look. She had like this mohawk that was the rest of her hair was shaved and you know she came out in like 86 or something and uh, or 87 and yeah that was a pretty unique look to me. I was only still only like nine years old or so and yeah I just thought she was so cool and she was portrayed like very interestingly in the comics and the cartoon my all-time favorite episode of the of the uh, old G.I. Joe cartoon and I think I've probably told you about it because I have a t-shirt based on it was an episode where Zorana went undercover in the G.I. Joe headquarters and her and uh, the G.I. Joe computer specialist mainframe kind of fell in love with each other even though he didn't know she was a member of Cobra she was in disguise and even after it it all you know came out that she was a bad guy she fled they still maintain this little like romance and I, I loved that episode. Very is stupid. Yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, I loved this figure. So one of my favorite characters. Now, when it came to the modern era of GI Joes, and they were redoing all the old toys um, in a nice new style. So, for example, that bat you showed us. Yeah. You know the the proportions were more realistic, yeah. more detailed. So with Zarana, you know you can see here she's yeah. is a more normal proportioned person. She's taller. Um, I like the two different colorings on the hair yeah. there, the, the mohawk being the kind I'm of blondish blonde. and the pink, uh, orangey, uh, yeah, yeah. shave side. Yeah. And so this was a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive, which is kind of a crime because she's such a cool character and by making her a San Diego exclusive, it prices her out for a yeah. lot of people not to be able to get her. Um, and sometimes with those exclusives, they're just repaints. But this was a brand new figure. Um, I think her lower legs are reused from a Scarlet figure. But otherwise, everything about her was brand new. Oh, okay. Like, the head sculpt is really nice and unique. Uh, you know, they've never reused that head because it really wouldn't work for anybody else. Um, they've reused her body a couple of times now with that torn shirt. Um, but, yeah, I just think it was a huge improvement oh, yeah. over this one. Um, she looks more realistic. Now, the funny thing is, like, I would definitely not describe this figure as, like, attractive. No, vintage, no <laughs> None of the vintage G.I. Joe's no. were. But the girls were always drawn pretty in the yeah. comic books and cartoons. And so I always had a crush on, like, Lorana, and I imagined her in my mind's eye, like, much more attractive than this. And in the modern era of G.I. Joe's, some of the figures have come out, you know, attractive, very pretty mm-hmm. faces and stuff. Zorana, unfortunately, I still don't think they've achieved that. Like, she looks kind of yeah. butch. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they've made her prettier i feel a little weird saying that um, yeah. but you know what i mean like well you just the thing and i think we'll probably touch on this with some of our other figures as well is that by uh, buying a lot and we have a little bit but buying a lot of these uh, newer figures of older characters we just want them to look like how as close in our mind as they looked at we, what they thought they looked like when we were playing with them yeah. how we fantasize they look so yeah i get it it's not about yeah yeah, <laughs> trying you know, to find the hottest like, figure, <laughs> about it. but yeah. like I can pop up some images of her from the from the comic book and stuff, and like just she she doesn't quite look yeah. like how they they always drew her to be a much more attractive person. So, but I still think this is a great figure, and I still really like the look of her. 
even if I don't think she's necessarily hot. Yeah. I think she's a really well-made figure. And since she was one of my all-time favorite Joe characters, I was very happy to get this Yeah, figure. that's great. It's yeah. a good figure. Cool. All right, so we'll move on to that. Yeah. One. So I had to... I could not not put this figure on my list. Okay. My favorite Spider-Man of all time, even though everyone hates him. I do. Well, most people do, is the Scarlet Spider. And we never had a good Scarlet Spider figure growing up. Mm -hmm. We had okay ones, but he has the hood on the back. He has the hoodie on the back. He's a superhero wearing a hoodie. How much more 90s is the Scarlet Spider? And and that's why I love it. It's a 90s look. I just thought it was such an... I liked the remake. I liked the re... Maybe the story didn't make a, a ton of sense, but I liked the reboot design for the 90s. I didn't think... It was over the top, extreme. With, you didn't have eighty million guns come off of him or something like that. So, I'm a huge Scarlet Spider fan, and I just I had to put this figure on the list, and 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 also just to show off these Marvel Select figures, which were uh, or, or these Marvel those, Universe Marvel Universe yeah. figures, sorry, that were uh, that they switched to for quite a long time, um, and they were they were really they were like the GI Joes. A lot of them were very well. Uh, uh, design and everything, even the folds in the back here, like the, the scale with them. You can see there, like yeah, you can have Scarlet Spider interact with Zarina. Right yeah, there. yeah, and so like I just the, yeah, like I saw on the the folds on the back of the hoodie where it's kind of the crinkled fabric. Those little attention to details. There's not much you can do with a red costume and a blue hoodie, mm-hmm. but uh, he's just one of my favorite Spider-Man characters. That's why I wanted to put him on the list. I like him too. Yeah, and in case there's anybody watching that doesn't know, it's from an infamous '90s storyline. Where the clone of Spider-Man showed up, and you'd think it would be done and over with in like a couple issues, but then they decided that this would be a good way to make Spider-Man not married again because Spider-Man in the comic books was married and it made him seem like less relatable. They keep, they keep trying to find a way for him not to be married. Well, so he's like, not married right yeah, now. Yeah, and uh, they found a way worse. Way yeah, to do it yeah. Later. <laughs> but at the time, so they thought, well, we'll bring in this clone of Spider-Man. Then they'll become friends after they fight. He took the name Ben Riley, which is after Uncle Ben and. Aunt May's maiden name, and he became Scarlet Spider, his own superhero, and then they did some tests, and they found out he was actually the real Spider-Man all along, and Peter Parker was the clone, and he was going to replace him, and Ben Riley was going to be the new star mm-hmm. of the book, but fans kind of revolted, and yeah. they went back, and they reversed that all, um, and he died, and he was dead for like 20 years, but he, he's come back recently. And he's still sporting. They, again, they tried to change his costume too to give him something updated, and fans didn't like it. Because so, <laughs> maybe, because yeah, it wasn't necessarily that fans hated the look as so much of the Scarlet Spiders. The story was a little bit convoluted, and they wanted their old. You know, they didn't want a replacement Peter Parker. They wanted Peter Parker. Yeah. Because um, even he eventually ditches this costume and gets more of a Spider-Man. Well, when, in, in the comics, back yeah, there. because yeah. So when they thought still thought he was the clone, but they were friends, he yeah. became Scarlet Spider. But then once it was revealed that he was actually the original, and Peter was the clone, Peter retired, and he said, "You be Spider Man now." So he got his own Spider Man costume, which was different than Peter, so you mm-hmm. could distinguish them. And he was Spider Man for a while, and he died as Spider Man. Um, but then did when he was revived in recent years, he's he's back as the Scarlet Spider. Oh, okay. And yeah, the costume is. Silly. Like, if you saw this guy in real life, like, I don't know how this would work in a movie. Yeah. It's a full one, like, red leotard from top to bottom with the blue sleeveless hoodie. Well, I think that was the whole point in uh, uh, Homecoming. They, hit, I thought his homemade costume was a tribute, was kind of a, a little nod to this. Yeah. Uh, the color schemes were the same. It looked like a hoodie he had over. Uh, and it, I don't know if it was intentionally a choice. I just thought it was like... This looks like somebody could just throw together, so I think it looked better than, say, the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man right, throwing right, together costumes. Let's compare and see what, how we okay. it similar. So yeah. Cut. So this is now, yeah, I was wrong. It's it's more of a reversed color scheme. <laughs> well, let's see. So like, here's the uh, updated. Yeah. So your your figure came out a couple years ago in the three and three quarter inch line. So this yeah. is the one from the current six inch line. Ooh, the spiders in different directions on the back. That could mm. be controversial. And then here is... Tom Holland Spider-Man homemade costume. Yeah. So it's got a hood. It's a reverse color kind of thing to me. It looks like, oh, I guess maybe it's just because it's a hoodie. But when I saw it in the movie, I was like, oh, is this a weird subtle nod to the Scarlet Spider? Yeah, it could be. Like, yeah, like I agree. I like this look too, as silly as it is. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was a nice figure. So a lot of these three and three quarter inch ones were really nice. It's a shame the line got uh, canceled when it did. But yeah, it's it's funny what they can the nice detail they can put into such a small figure. Uh, you know, yeah. on some of these guys. I mean, obviously Spider Man has a mask, but some of the GI Joes and the Marvel ones. It's just the detail they can even get into the faces and stuff on, on such a small scale. Yeah. yeah. 
right. You right. want the next one? Yep. yep. All right. So for my number six, this is the most valuable toy I've got here. It's not necessarily the most expensive toy in my collection, but uh, so this here is the Crow. Mm -hmm. Here, I might actually have to take the block down for that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go ahead and look at them here. So, my all-time favorite movie, yeah, is The Crow, um, which. It's like it's it's kind of dated now. It came out in like ninety. Oh, it's still good. I rewatched it recently. <laughs> yeah, I still think it's fantastic. I watch it every year. It's usually, it's kind of like my Halloween movie. Oh yeah. Um, so yeah, I watch it every year. I still think it's great. But I, it is, I wish people people would wish I would stop quoting it though. They have no idea. Every time people complain about the rain, I'm like, can't rain all the time. And then yeah. they're like, what? And I'm like, ah, oh, never mind. It's the crow. You don't know what I'm fucking talking about. <laughs> Well, it's so old now. Like it's this movie, and they've been talking about remaking it. They made a ton of stupid sequels, and they did a TV series. DMX on was going to be the crow at yeah. one point. <laughs> so it's kind of like watered down the franchise. You know, it's almost. It's, I feel it's almost even people that don't know the movie. It's so nineties. It almost seems like a, a joke when I say like, "Oh, my favorite movie is The Crow." Now it just mm -hmm. seems so like, oh, it's so nineties goth, um, emo y or whatever. Like. It's just a great movie. It right? is. It was an amazing movie. Yeah. And, you know, the Brandon Lee that played the crow, if you don't know the story, uh, for one, go watch the movie if you've never seen mm. the movie. But go check it out on Wikipedia, read up on it. Brandon Lee was Bruce Lee's son, and he was actually killed making the movie The Crow, which is about a guy that comes back from the dead to avenge his, like, slain girlfriend. And uh, I just think, even though it's kind of a, you know, noir, gothic superhero movie, before superhero movies were cool, um, it just works so well. The performances I think are so great. Um, you know, from Brandon playing the crow, Eric Draven. Yeah, um, my dogs are going. Apes That's right okay. There. Yeah, don't mind the dogs. <laughs> yeah, they're uh, just having fun. Yeah, but uh, this figure, so it's made by Hot Toys. Yeah, and they make the nicest expensive toys. figures. Yeah. Hot Toys retail for about two hundred bucks. Um, if you get like an Iron Man or somebody more complicated with the armor and stuff, they can it's get more up to parts, so, yeah. yeah, like four or five hundred bucks. You know, some of them I think the Hulkbuster Iron Man gets upwards of like a oh, thousand geez, bucks. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they're really nice. Um, again, just to give you a closer look at him here, like the detail of his face. Um, again, I don't know if I'm doing it justice from what you can see there. Yeah, but uh, like anything from the pores on his skin, like. His face isn't just painted white. Like it looks like how your face would look if you put white, uh, white makeup on it. Yeah. He's got his little wedding ring there around. Oh, yeah. His engagement ring around his neck, which is like in the movie. His costume is kind of patched together with like duct tape and twine, which is what he did in the movie there. His guitar here, there's actually strings on his guitar. Uh, he came with his kind of sidekick, the crow, the actual bird, um, that kind of perches on his shoulder. Um, just the detail in, in every piece of this figure is just really nice. Mm -hmm. This would be a great figure, uh, even if I didn't absolutely love the movie, but I do happen to... And I love the guitar that's around there. From the, that's just a... The one thing about the Hot Toy is that, like, because I have my own, which I didn't didn't make my list, but it probably could have or should have, mm. is the Catwoman one uh, yeah. from The Dark Knight Rises. Uh, and... The only thing I don't like about that figure, and this is why I didn't make my list, is, and it really irritated me, is that the re the fake real hair on the females. Yeah. Because it gets it gets dry in your apartment, the hair gets frizzy. Yeah. I do like with this is like it's sculpted. It's a hair. sculpted hair, and it looks like wet hair in the rain, like he looked like throughout the entire movie. So yeah, yeah, yeah I do like that about the. Well, I have a few hot toys, and again, this guy would have won been my selection hands down they're all beautiful toys they can all make this list mm -hmm. but i have snake eyes and storm shadow from the gi joe movie and but they're worth both wearing masks so even though you can really appreciate the craftsmanship of them mm -hmm. i think seeing a human face done with this attention to detail is yeah really, it's really well done that's what stops people in their tracks and say like, yeah. oh wow this is this is something special um i also have uh tonto from the lone which mm -hmm. is johnny depp from lone ranger which, even though that movie's stupid, like, he still looks really good. He's similarly got white face paint on, and he looks really good. But the problem with him is he's shirtless, and you can really see the, the joints on it, you know, his elbows, and it makes him look like a doll. Whereas, you know, the joints are all hidden on this guy, so yeah. you, don't, you don't think that. Um, 
So yeah, even if I didn't have a huge attachment to this character, just if I had to pick one of my hot toys yeah, for that so reason, this guy's got the face that you can see exposed, and he doesn't have all the joints exposed. Um, so this would be my pick, but because I absolutely love the crow, love Brandon Lee, um, yeah, this is definitely one of the best toys in my collection. And yeah, Vanessa got this for me for uh, yeah. Christmas one year. And yeah, one of the greatest gifts I've ever gotten. So it's yeah, awesome. it's not only is it such a great figure, but it holds uh, the memories from when you got it in there. Yeah. But, yeah. So yeah, great toy. Yeah. All right, your next one. Yeah. All right, I think I screwed up for my number six, because it All didn't right. occur to me before uh, we got here that we might have, these might be disqualified from toys, since you don't really play yeah, with them yeah, as much, so. and there's not... But I had to represent vinyl pops. Yep. So, uh, and the reason being, like, I, I, I've always had a few vinyl pops, but lately because uh, you've got me back into them, and uh, with the discount at EB Games and stuff, it makes it easier to, to buy these guys, I find. Now he's going to fall over because he's one of those guys that don't stand up very well. Uh, I've got a solution. Yeah, <laughs> so, perfect. So the reason, I wanted, like I said, I wanted to pick a vinyl pop. Um, and why did I go with the Biggie Smalls one? For a few reasons. He's clearly a fashion icon. <laughs> I, lo I love hip-hop. I love Biggie Smalls. Uh, this was given to me, a gift for me from a buddy of mine, Travis, a comic in town uh, around Christmas. Um, and I, the reason I picked that is... I, I got into an argument with a friend of mine once about how he's like he thought vinyl pops are stupid because he's like, I, don't, I look at them and I can't see... Who they're even supposed to be, which I think is just ridiculous. Well, some of them you can't. Some of them you can't. Some of them are really hard. Like, I bought the Dirty Dancing ones recently. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have them side by side, I don't think you're going to go, what? Because you see the baby in her classic outfit and then Patrick Swayze and his. You go, oh, that's Dirty Dancing. But maybe you just saw one of them separately. You'd be like, what? Yeah. But anyway, I think this encompasses a lot uh, of Biggie, the, uh, the Big Tims, the... the the, uh, the crown from the iconic uh, photo of him. Mm -hmm. uh, there is another Biggie Smalls one out there where he's got the bad boy jersey on. Actually, it yeah. says Biggie. It doesn't say bad boy, which bothers yeah. me. Yeah. Because I wish they would do it more authentic. Well, same thing. Like, uh, I wanted to get the Talladega Knights figures. Yeah. But there was two problems with them. For one, like we were saying, Will Ferrell doesn't have enough. He doesn't have a fancy goatee or anything. He's just a, a guy with two black circles for mm -hmm. eyes and curly hair. It doesn't look... Like Will Ferrell, yeah, and you think you need the costume to really sell this, and mm -hmm. you want him to wear his Wonder Bread, but instead it's got it's just red and blue, and it says things like uh, like like generic words like NASCAR or not even probably NASCAR, just like yeah. car or Funko or something. On yeah, it. and it's what's not... and it didn't represent Ricky Bobby, so I was like, I didn't get that one. Yeah, so I guess yeah, that's what bothered me about that one. I mean, like I didn't choose this one. Obviously, Travis got it for me, but I like mm -hmm. this one better out of the two. And another reason why I like the vinyl pop does stuff like that with like like different things like Biggie Smalls is yeah, you, there's awesome Batman ones, there's awesome Spider Man ones, but you can get a Batman and Spider Man figure in any multiple different style. Yeah, for a rap fan like me to have some sort of figure or toy to represent Biggie Smalls, there's this, the other vinyl, and one I found online that's not a vinyl; it's a figure they made, but it's going for fifteen hundred dollars. Like there's yeah. not much out there, so I do like that that the Funko Pop lines. Uh, kind of provide that a way for you to get certain characters that they're never going to have their own toy line or yeah. other stuff. So yeah, yeah, that's what, like I have a ton of Funko Pops and yeah, even though didn't, none of them made the list, uh, some of them like one that's made my top ten list previously was like my Bebop mm -hmm. from Ninja Turtles because he's my favorite character from Ninja Turtles, and I've got like four or five different versions of him, but I never thought any version. Like, I didn't like how the vintage one had his, like, one bare foot poking out of his shoe and he yeah. kind of hunched over. He was kind of uglier than how I wanted Bebop to look. And then the more modern versions, he's skinnier, he's wearing black leather, he doesn't look like Bebop. But you get the pop vinyl, and it's like, this is this exactly is a, yeah. what Bebop is supposed to look like. It's got all the the pig snout, the mm -hmm. nose ring, the mohawk. It's like, it covers him perfectly at a, one glance, you know who that is. And yeah, I feel, as long as you know who Biggie is, yeah, yeah. you look at that for one second, and you're like, yeah, that's... Clearly yeah, exactly. Awesome. So that's so that's why it sits on my desk in front of my monitor. So I figure it's one of my favorite toys that should be included on the list somewhere. So yeah, no, yeah. no. Yeah. he's I, he's valid. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so my number five pick is from 1985. This is the Invid yeah. Shock Trooper um, from Matchbox, I believe, that made this. And uh, yeah, now. I loved Robotech when yeah. I was a kid. It was like my first anime that I ever got into. It's kind of like a, a soap opera, essentially. 
and uh, it's got a really interesting history. I know you and I tried. You know, I tried to get you to watch the. Whole I, I liked it. It's yeah. just it's hard to find time to go through the entire series together. But uh, and I don't like anime, but I like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't watch it much anime at all either. Uh, I didn't even really know what anime was when this came on. I was st- like a very little kid. Like some of the other famous ones, like Akira. I heard about that when I was more like in junior yeah. high or high school. But like I was like you know eight when I was watching this. And compared to like the other cartoons I was watching, it was so adult. Like there was sex and mm-hmm. death, and uh, it was just it was really intense. And just very quickly to explain how it all worked, is uh, there was one very popular anime series in Japan called Macross, and they wanted to bring that over to the U.S. and you know sell it to redub it and sell it to American kids. But there was some I don't know law they needed a certain amount of episodes for the the channel or whatever the station to buy the program. And so they're like, how are we going to do this? With, there's not enough shows. Macross ended and there wasn't enough episodes. So they took three totally unrelated Japanese shows. It's very much how the Japanese do things. <laughs> or, or Americans do when they're yeah, buying Japanese they're like, things. They're yeah. like, kids, kids don't know the difference. Yeah. <laughs> so they took three unrelated shows and redubbed them so as if it was three generations of one series. So it was very well done. Like, I didn't know that until I was older and learned yeah. about that. But, like, when the Macross series ended and all the bad guys, you know, died and it was, you know, it was the, clearly an ending, they were kind of, ended, they redubbed it. And the guys were like, well, hopefully our kids will do better when the next wave of aliens attack, whatever. And then the next show starts with different heroes and yeah. different looking aliens. And they're like, our parents warned us about this. And they just kind of did three generations. Yeah, I think we got to the second series. Like, I know we definitely yeah. got finished the first series and it was starting, yeah. yeah. But so from the third generation, um, which was actually the Japanese series on its own was called something like, Maspita, something or other, I don't know. But this was the bad guy in it, which looked nothing like the bad guys <laughs> in the first two chapters, but it was it's basically a giant purple crab. Like, yeah. you can see these crab claws, this little oh, yeah, makes, yeah. makes the claws grab it, yeah. Um, and it's actually a spaceship. You open this up, and there's a, a pilot inside. That's Korg piloting this. Um, but yeah, I just loved this purple crab. Again, I was just... I'm the kind of kid that loved catching bugs in the yard. Whenever we'd go to the beach, rather than swimming, I'd be more concerned with flipping over rocks and bringing home crabs and buckets. Uh, yeah. And, yeah, I just thought this was the coolest looking thing in the world. It's such a big hunk of plastic too. That's yeah. so durable. Like for like if you're if you were a little kid and you wanted to play with that, like yeah, you, you feel like you really got your, you really got a good present on your hand there. You know? and yeah, like he's just big and kind of menacing looking. Uh, I loved it. And the thing is, Robotech toys were really hard to find. Mm -hmm. And we tried. It wasn't a very big assortment. It was really only one wave of figures that came out, about 15 figures or so in total, and then some of these ships. And we searched high and low to find this stuff. Couldn't find this guy for the life of me. It was like one of the two or three white whales of my Mm -hmm. toy collection. Like When I was a kid, I really wanted a Rancor. From Return yeah, of the Jedi, yeah. I really wanted this thing. I still want an Ad-At Walker someday. That's like a good size one that just takes up space in my living room. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. And the other one for me was the Kraken from the original class. Oh, yeah. like, I loved these big monstery things. And to me, I didn't think of this as a spaceship. I just thought of it as a big purple crab yeah. monster. And I wanted this so bad. Never got it. Um, we had a, like a cousin that had one. And I always like just wished and wished he'd give it to me one day. <laughs> I, I was so jealous that he had this thing. Anyway, uh, yeah, my brother Doug got this for me for Christmas just a couple of years ago, and it's the first time I owned one, and it's just like, I was so, so stoked to finally get this yeah. thing. Um, like, this isn't like a modern remake. Like, I'm sure if they did do a new one, it would probably be even cooler and have more details, but there's just something about this, like, 80s toy, the yeah. bright, clunky, simplest, like, simple design. Uh, yeah, I just love it. And it's great, yeah. 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 So, so glad you got this. Great toy. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. There you go. Okay, so my fifth toy, and I brought a little extra guy to go with him here. But it is Bruce, or Jaws, or whatever you want to call him, the shark. Now, they did recently just come out with a vinyl pop version of these characters, which Mm -hmm. I bought and loved. But there's something about these characters here that I really... I don't know... know, If you would have told me that they were ever even going to make a Jaws action figure, I'd have been like, why would they? Like, just hardcore collectors only, but it's not that, you know... And they're in the style, uh, like, they're the same, they do a lot of these lines of toys yeah, here. Here's yeah. the Funko Pop one. Yeah, which is adorable. Like, to me, that's just cute. Yeah, this guy is menacing. 
<laughs> I like the cuts on his face. They're kind of hard to see, maybe. Yeah, the scar, over, the his scar over his eyes and stuff. And I really... I love Quint. Quint is one of my favorite characters. And I didn't buy the other guys. I just bought Quint with him. Because mm-hmm. mostly he sits at home uh, on my work desk in in Bruce's mouth there. And yeah. I'm just sitting like that on my desk. And um, I just... I don't know why. I just really lo- found love with this one. I had to have it the minute I saw yeah, it. It's I just, awesome. I have it too. Yeah. And I have all three guys. And I'm glad I got them when I did. Because, yeah, these things have really gone up in value. Oh, yeah. 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 And it makes sense. Like, Jaws is... One of the best movies ever made, and it's got a huge fan base. Yeah, and uh, yeah, there's just not a whole lot of merchandise. Like, I, I, I <laughs> it's funny because when I have people over in my house and they see like the toys that I do have on display, they're kind of some people are like I don't, wanna, I don't really get this, but they always sort of react to Jaws figures. They're yeah. like, oh shit, is is a shark and the guy from Jaws? I'm like, <laughs> like maybe it's the like I said the surprise element. They wouldn't expect that sort of thing to exist, right? Yeah. Um, but I like I like that they have the Funko Pop ones. But I, something about the style of these figures that they've been putting out, and uh, the I, you'll know you know the line of toys name better than I do. Reaction, yeah. For these, like they have movie characters mostly and TV characters and stuff. That's my only complaint about him is that he leans heavily. Mm-hmm. He's heavily weighted, so he always leans down like that. The Funko Pop one Funko does Pop too. Do, does too. It would be nice if somehow they had a stand for these characters or something yeah. that could kind of make it look at least like he was coming out of the water. Of water. Yeah. But other than that, I think uh, the jaw pops off a little bit, but it's fine. It goes on easily again. And he came um, with the gas canister. Yeah, and he came with a gas canister, which I just left at home. But uh, I just, yeah. it's And I know people are like, oh, it could just be any generic shark. <laughs> you could just say it was the shark from Jaws, but you can tell that's Jaws. When you yeah, look you can tell when you look at. It. You don't need Quint. You look at it, people come in like, oh, you got you got Jaws. Yeah, yeah, I got Jaws. So that's yeah. why I want to put him on my list. It's one of my favorite ones. So yeah, no, that's a great figure. Yeah. So for my number four selection, now this was another very difficult one because I was kind of picking one toy to represent a brand, really, because I could have picked ten characters from this toy line. Mm-hmm. But um, when I was a kid, me and my brother Doug collected GI Joe together. So when the new wave of G.I. Joe's came out, we did Pixies on the back of the package. So we kind of knew who we'd get over the course of the year, and we stuck to our guns on that. We did the same thing with Transformers and He-Man. So I personally never owned a Skeletor or uh, a Megatron or whatever because Doug had those ones, and I didn't feel like I didn't have them because we collected together. And it allowed us to get a whole lot more toys that way. We weren't trying to both get our own version of Megatron stuff. The first toy line that came around that was just for me because Doug was maybe a little too old for them at the time was Battle Beasts, mm-hmm. which were these little figures here that were actually a spin-off from Transformers in Japan. Like, they have these little rub emblems on their chest, and I don't know if this will pick up on camera, but when I, you put heat on it, um, one of three uh, symbols shows. This guy, I think, is fire. It's either fire, wood, or water. Mm-hmm. And the premise was you were supposed to play with these things like uh, paper, rock, scissors. So you could um, you could buy this, rock, this rhino, um, and you could... You didn't know which symbol he was going to get because he was available with all three stickers. Oh, okay. So I could have a pile of Battle Beasts. You could have a pile of Battle Beasts. I'd reach and grab one. I'd say, okay, I got mine. And we'd rub the emblems and I'd say, okay, this is the fire version of him. And you'd say, oh, I've got the wood version of my guy. And fire burns wood. Mm-hmm. Wood floats on water. Water extinguishes fire. And I guess if I'm one, you'd have to give me your toy or whatever. That's kind of how they marketed it. Like, a Yeah, I, I remember when the Pogs came out and they were this whole, like, you take your friends from you, you like, you win your friend's stuff. And I was like, the hell with that. I'm not losing mine. Like, <laughs> I didn't like the aspect of any of these toys where it was like, yeah, play against your friends and they get to keep yours if you win them. Nope, nope, nope. Yeah. But the funny thing about these is, like, it was, this is the first toy line for me also that I completely got to make it up. Because even though it was based on a property in Japan, we didn't know that in America. They never told us it was tied to Transformers mm-hmm. in any sort of way. Um, the characters had names, but we they weren't even on the pack. Like, I didn't know that. There was a special poster you could order away for, and the poster came and it listed all the characters' names. But that's the only way you ever knew these characters' names. So, like, when I called this guy, I called him Battle Rhino. And mm-hmm. that's what I did. I had Battle Fox, Battle Ram, Battle Spider. Um, I didn't know until years and years later this guy's called Rocky Rhino, which is okay. kind of lame. But, uh, yeah, like, I love so many of these figures. My Kind of my favorite, I guess, would I kind of like this Fox <laughs> guy. Um, and he was, I don't know, I guess I kind of compare him almost to a Spider-Man of my good guy team. I divided them. I played with them just like I would yeah. Transformers or G.I. Joe. I, had, I split them. They always came in two packs. So when you buy two, you get two figures. And there was no names, no designations, you know, other than the wood and the water and stuff. 
and I would every two pack I'd buy, I'd say, okay, you're a good guy and you're a bad guy, and they would join my opposing teams. So this was kind of like my main fighter, good guy. He was yeah. kind of like he'd do the jokes and the quips, and he was acrobatic and stuff. But Rhino here was the leader of my good guys, so he was kind of like my Optimus Prime. He was a noble, you know, leader and stuff, and. He's just got such a cool design. Like rhinos are probably one of my favorite type of animal. Yeah. You'll see here one of his hands is actually like a mace or something. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then he also comes with his little weapon here. A little limited articulation on these figures, just the arms move. Um, but yeah, I just I love these little things, and it was so hard to pick just one. But like I said, I think when I think of the brand in my head, I think probably the rhino best encompasses what I loved about them, just as far as design, taking these animals that I loved in so I used to play those little you know plastic barn yeah, animals yeah. and it really elevated playing with those things into something cool yeah. and yeah love these things so yeah this is my number four yeah yeah so Rocky Rhino from Battle Beasts cool uh, my number four is a I had to rep oh geez his foot just came off <laughs> I had to represent uh, Ninja Turtles this is one of my all time favorite lines of toys yeah and this came out, this line came out, I would say, what, around 2010-ish, 2011, somewhere around mm-hmm. then? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, anyway, was, they were, everything I thought, yeah, I should have brought his stand, because he's, he, well, the yeah, biggest complaint is he's oh, too ar- over-articulated. Yeah, those toes. The toes, it doesn't make any sense as to why they would do all that. Uh, but this looks like the cartoon that I yeah. watched as a kid. It's so dead on. And Raphael's my all-time favorite Ninja Turtle. Uh, I have his weapons here. There was little size and stuff like that. So you can get those two. They, it's, they, when they come out of his hands, they're so... Oh, yeah, and they fit right in the front of the belt there, which is nice. Yep. Uh, I have all the four original Turtles. I think Leonardo and this one are the two of my favorite ones that I have. Yep. Um, they did do a second wave with the villains. They're a bit disappointing. I have the Bebop and Rocksteady. But I don't think they look anywhere near like their cartoon counterparts. Yeah, I've got the, the Bebop. Yeah, yeah uh, which is a shame because they did such a good job at making these ones look like their cartoon car- counterparts. I don't know why they they took such a left turn yeah. in the second wave because I was going to see where they went, where they were going to go with it. I wanted a a shredder that looked like the shredder in the cartoons. And well, there's uh, one. Have you seen? There's a new one now that looks. Oh really? Yeah, I'll show you the math word. But NECA oh, okay. is making these ones. It looks. Oh right. okay okay. And also Super Seven, the guy that makes Masters of the Universe. Yeah. They're making their own line of turtles, which they haven't oh. revealed yet, but they're very likely going to be in the same style and as the Masters of the Universe. Oh, wicked, um, wicked, so. yeah. But yeah, I just other than the articulation, there's too many points of it, in my opinion. I think this is a solid, uh, nostalgic Raphael f- figure for my collection. Yeah. Yep. No, I get it because this thing I grew, I grew up on Ninja Turtles too. They came around again. I was probably just a little older because you know, yeah. there's a few years yeah. between us, so it came a little late in the game for me, but. The toys didn't look like the comics. Nothing. The comics didn't look yeah. like the cartoons. <laughs> the live action movies didn't look right. So even though I liked kind of all those versions, there was of no it. consistency amongst yeah. the amongst the brand of, as to what the characters looked like. Yeah. yeah. So it was nice to get something that finally looks like how yeah. you wanted it to look when you were a kid. Yeah. And if I like, yeah, if these would have been the way the toys looked when when the Ninja Turtles toys came out when I was a kid, they would. I, I mean, they sold like crazy anyway, the toys, but I can't imagine how well they would have yeah. sold if they looked the old something ones were like, nice. like They were. Not like Transformers, where the Transformer, you, you love this character on TV and you get it and it's this hunk of plastic that doesn't well, do anything. The old turtles were pretty the old. Nice, the so. thing about the old turtles that were good was their durability, because they were yeah. so tiny and so like limbs and a body, basically. And you could. And I like the specialty ones they did when they had like uh, Donatello's a basketball player. Yeah. Like, that was kind of Michelangelo's The Wrestler. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I like those ones. But I, ha- I had to pick a turtle to represent my list. So, yeah. yeah. All right. All right. So on to number three. Guys. So yeah. here's my number three selection. Okay. And it is the oldest toy on my list. Now, I've had, I think, two or three toys from, like, 1985 with Mantis and the Invid and stuff. Yeah. Um, this toy is from 1978, which came out the exact same year I was born. Oh, shit. <laughs> and this is... Walrus Man from the original <laughs> Star Wars toy line from Kenner. Yeah. Now this guy, I don't know why I love him necessarily. Because he's so weird. That's why you love him. He's just a weird looking character. <laughs> like, was it, so, like a lot of these aliens back in the original Star Wars toy line, they didn't have names in the movies. Like They weren't referred to as anything. Um, and so they just called this guy Walrus Man because he had these kind of like tusks on his face. Yeah. Now this one here, you know, the toy 
didn't look anything like the movie. So I, I got this toy when I was like too young to even remember it. And whenever I played with Star Wars, it wasn't Luke or Han or whatever that was the hero. It was like always Walrus Man was always yeah. kind of like leading the pack and saving the day. <laughs> that would have been a whole different franchise. Yeah, I, just, I love this guy. But he's so stupid looking. Like yeah. He's wearing like an orange bathing suit. With like, and then these look at these feet. He's got like black webbed feet on, like he's wearing flippers or something. I don't know. And then the blue, just a skin, yeah. but it looks like he wears gloves on. It's like, <laughs> like a wetsuit, type yeah. Of thing. And then his his head just looks kind of like a pea, like a pea green. And then he's got these googly eyes, like. But I love this toy. I guess because I love mm-hmm. monsters and creatures. So like him and Admiral Akbar were my favorite vintage yeah. Star Wars toys. And it wasn't until, like, the 90s when they started making Star Wars toys again and they put out a film-accurate version of this guy. Where he's and dressed actually, like he's supposed to be. Yeah, this is what he looked like in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> and, and they gave him a name, and now he's Ponda Baba is this character's name. So anytime there's a new toy of this guy, he's known as Ponda Baba instead of the generic Walrus Man. I prefer Walrus Man. Me too. That's the thing. Like, And I even have this, like, kind of nicer, like, 12-inch 12, 12 <laughs> doll of him. Like, he's forever going to be my favorite Star Wars character. But really, if they had come up with that toy when I was a kid, I don't think... Like, I still think he's cool. I don't yeah. think these, this guy looks neat. But I don't think he would have been my favorite. Like, I would have leaned more towards Greedo or somebody. Just because he's not as interesting looking to me. And so, I'll keep buying toys when they make them like this. But I'd always rather yeah. them do something like this. Which is actually really cool. They did a Funko Pop of him and they did him in this Oh, okay. Style. Okay. And you can maybe see him here behind you. I actually bought... See, on the, in the camera there... You know, oh, okay, yeah. Oh, um, the tall... Yeah, yeah, right yeah, there yeah. Beside him. Oh, okay, yeah. He's in the same colors as that, yeah. So that is a 12-inch reproduction of, of this exact figure. Oh, that's so cool, So it's yeah. this exact figure in this scale. Oh. Uh, and I still got him in his packaging, so he's pinned up there behind Andrew. Yeah. But yeah, I love oh. this character. But more specifically, I love this toy. Mm-hmm. So there you go. Oh, that's awesome. This is my number three, which is Red Sun Superman. Comes from a... I have him... I always have him with his head turning to the side, holding the flag like that. I don't know why. It looks like he's... looks like he's getting ready for battle. Like, you know, like... I'll get Mike in the shot there. <laughs> now it's just, you know what? You've seen the flag. It's a communist flag. There you go. We'll put, uh, we'll put Superman up a little closer. Uh, so it comes from the Red Sun, which was DC... Uh, Elseworld story about what it would be if Superman landed in Russia instead of the United States, mm-hmm. uh, and I like I like the story. Like it's it's a good story. It is. I think yeah. You know, uh, but I just I never thought they would make a figure with Superman with a hammer and sickle, like uh, representing communism. It's such a stark uh, opposition to everything they know about Superman being the red, white, and blue American flag bearer. And that's why I just, I love that there's a figure of it. I love that it's got the, the hammer and the sickle logo yeah. on his chest. And I even have the Wonder Woman that comes with him, and she's got more of the, the Russian colors on her outfit. But I just chose to bring him. And I can't remember who the artist was in that book, but it's kind of, you know, done in his style yeah. a little bit. Yeah. So it looks kind of like I do in the book. Yeah. Um, yeah. Most of the toys you have, like, I don't have the same wrestlers as you because yeah. I'm not into wrestling. But any toy that you have that I would want. I generally have. Yeah. I have all the same Masters Universe as you and yep. whatever else. This is the figure you have in your collection that I'm most jealous of. <laughs> in that I wish I had bought this when it had come out, as well as the Batman with the kind of like oh, yeah. the hat yeah. on and stuff. Um, I just, I loved that series when it first came out. I bought it when it was first released, and I loved the idea of these figures coming out, and I just, I don't know why I didn't pull the trigger at the time. But Yeah, well, it, I just got lucky. I think I walked into Strange Adventures, and I happen to have them, and I went, yes, I've got money, I'll buy it now. Because it's one of those things I imagine now if you were trying to find, it's probably more expensive online yeah. than it would have been if you I just I don't know about now, but a couple years ago, I know I tried to look, and yeah, they were selling for like 100 bucks a pop or something, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, it just... And now, do you know if they've ever re, like done another version of the Red Sun? I just that one looks like you said so much like the comic book. I don't think I would ever want a different take. On I it. don't think they have. Yeah. actually, no. But yeah, maybe so. a pop or something. But. And this is one of my once I got back into toys, one of my longest, you know, one of the longest toys that I've had for the longest amount of time. So yeah. Yeah, that's why it was my number three. Yeah, no, it's really nice. Yeah, man. So, nice pick. Right. Number two selection, and again, this seems kind of crazy to me that. This is the only vintage G.I. Joe on my list. It's only the only the second G.I. Joe on my list. But 
when I was a kid, like, I loved so many of the G.I. Joe characters. And, you know, I, I was buying them when they first came out in 82. Um, and, you know, I had my favorite 82 character, my favorite 83, 80, 45. So the fact that I'm, my favorite G.I. Joe toy ever is from 87 is maybe kind of surprising because it's mm -hmm. pretty late in the game. But this here is Ice Viper. Okay. Yeah. And, yeah, it's... People that know that I'm a hardcore Joe guy might be surprised that this would be my pick because it's not Snake Eyes or Doom. Yeah. Anybody that he's not even a, an original like like sole character like he's a trooper type like there would be all kinds of ice vipers running around I guess. But um, I love this guy for a lot of reasons. Um, partly is I got him for the same Christmas where I got my favorite GI Joe character, which was Shockwave, which was a guy a blue SWAT guy. And so I, he was, I got them both that same Christmas, and I made Shockwave, like, the biggest badass of my Joe team. Like, ridiculously so. Like, yeah. He, he could flip a Jeep with his bare hands <laughs> and all that stuff. I made him, like, just the super badass. I loved the look of him. I always liked when the good guys had a full face mask and stuff like mm -hmm. Shockwave did. And because I got this guy at the same time, he was kind of the counterpart to Shockwave. And so he was the strongest guy on my Cobra team. And I didn't treat him as a trooper. I treated him as an original guy. So Ice Viper joined my Cobra forces that Christmas, and he was super tough. And he wins out over Shockwave for a couple reasons. I think just from a pure design standpoint, I think he's more interesting looking. Uh, I think the proportions are a little better. Shockwave always had kind of a long a head that was just slightly too long. Mm -hmm. um, this guy came with an awesome vehicle. He came with the Cobra Wolf, which is really cool. Um, now for a vehicle driver to come with these size, which is, yeah. you know, it's pretty crazy because what is this guy, a ninja? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, like, yeah, we had some random weapons, so he's got size. Yeah, and, like, but, you know, being a Ninja Turtles fan, like, I knew yeah. what size were. And then they could be stored. I don't know if I'll be able to get to do it, but, like, they could be stored oh, cool. on the side of his leg yeah. like that, which is just really neat. And I think he looked great in this mask, this helmet. But, the but helmet, you can take it out? The helmet was removable. Oh, okay. And he had, like, a ski mask face underneath, which I think is just equally cool looking. Yeah. So, you know, in the fight, whenever he was fighting Shockwave or whoever else, his helmet would get kicked off, and he still had, like, another even cooler face underneath. And I just, I loved this guy so much. And I still think he looks great. And this is a character that I really wanted them to redo in the modern era. Yeah. And they first did in modern Ice Viper as part of the uh, movie line. Even though Ice Viper wasn't in the movie, they released a bunch of other figures that were yeah. kind of like in that same aesthetic. And he didn't look anything like the uh. Ice Viper. And I was kind of like, bummer. But then, a couple years later, they did release this modern era version of him. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. And, like, it's a pretty good... They did a pretty good job. Same idea. Yep. Like, he's... Um, his mask here... So, he's got the same idea, the helmet, and even the goggles that were removable from the oh, helmet. Oh, okay. And he's got the ski mask underneath. Um, look wise, he still got the size pinned to his leg, like it's all there. Yeah, but I still I don't think he looks as good as this one. Like I just love this classic. The colors are a little more vibrant in the original one. I think like like it, I don't know. It just looks more. It pops more in your eyes than the uh, new one. Yeah, like this one for me. Like I think this guy's like the, I can nitpick. His neck is too skinny and stuff. Yeah. Um, but for whatever reason, the more realistic proportions, like this guy looks like more somebody you'd see in the real world as opposed yeah. to this guy, I just don't think it helps this particular... Like, I like the kind of cartoonier look of this guy. I think it's the superior figure, and that might be partly the nostalgia talking, because obviously this guy's been with me through thick yeah. and thin, whether it be the sandbox, the backyard, yeah. snowbanks, all that sort of stuff, whereas this guy just makes for a nice display piece. Yeah. But where I picked the new Zarana over the vintage one, because I think that was a vast improvement... This one's just like a nice redo of something that was already awesome, but yeah. I don't think it's superior. Yeah, there was nothing wrong with the original figure. Like, that yeah. made you go like, oh, well, I I'm glad they improved it on a new figure. Yeah, yeah so I love this Ice Viper. So yeah. that's my number two pick. For, that's great. Yeah. yeah, all right, so let's check out yours. All right. All right, so my number two pick is the Dragon Zord from the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, and he's in a weird, rough shape because this is not a re-release Dragon Zord, which they've done over the last few years. This is... A Dragon Zord from when he first came out. Now, I didn't own him when he first came out. I mm. I was probably too old to love Power Rangers, but I loved Power Rangers nonetheless. Because I, you were talking about Robotech earlier. Yeah. And I remember the first time I seen Power Rangers, and I was like, why does half the footage look new and half of the footage look old as shit? And then I realized it's because they bought the Japanese show and they've turned it into things... And so, um, when they saw Dragon's Art, I was like, oh, they have a mechanical Godzilla. That's awesome. Yeah. 
Yeah. Like they had their own Mecha Godzilla, basically. I like the yeah, storyline. I never noticed how much he looks like Mecha Godzilla. Yeah. So, yeah. I like the storyline they did with him. Um, a lot of the stickers on this are peeling, but what I the stickers on these aren't the original stickers. I went and bought. Uh, I think Repo Label was label as a company. Yeah. Uh, because the stickers did. They didn't. The stickers were only didn't match the decals from the show. So what these decals are, are more of the show accurate decals. Okay. Cool. And uh, I didn't quite properly remove all the old decals, so they're peeling a little bit. And I suck at putting fucking <laughs> decals on anyway. Yeah. But uh, his tail comes off, can be used as a weapon, uh, and he opens up. Now he, you have to have the old Megazord to do it with it. But he opens up, and he. I'm not going to be able to do it all here, but this comes out, and he attaches himself to Megazord to make Super Megazord. Okay. So, I always love the character. Uh, it You can get the rem- remake now, and it's a great, you know, it's a great toy, but I had to hunt this down on eBay. <laughs> yeah. I lost a bunch of auctions before I could get this one at a reasonable price, so it has that much more, uh, you know, importance to me, because I always wanted it growing up, I always wanted yeah. it, and we never got it, you know anywhere near our stores so that's why it's so i get it it's yeah. like you're in vid to me i have no ties yeah. to power rangers so like, yeah yeah it doesn't do anything for me particularly although when you mentioned it, him looking like mecha godzilla yeah uh yeah just like the the hands of being yeah. like gun turrets and stuff he also has you can put batteries in him too and he has some buttons he can push and i'm like the choo, choo, like he's shooting missiles and yeah. stuff yeah that's cool yeah. i can appreciate that yeah yeah and he's a big monster and we like big monsters so yeah yeah, yeah. All right. Cool. Okay. So, my number one toy, my collection. And again, I didn't... This was kind of even a surprise to me. Um, it is Merman from Masters of the Universe Classics. Mm-hmm. So, this figure came out in 2009, I think it was. the Pretty much the first full year of Masters of the Universe Classic releases. Oh, yeah. And his head's kind of falling off here. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Yeah. So, Merman... So this goes back again to Walrus Man being my favorite Star Wars character. Yeah. I just love creatures, monsters, and I think I particularly love fish monsters. Yeah. Um, and so he's the kind creature, of... A, you like the Creature of the Black Lagoon, yeah, too? Black Lagoon. Yeah, yeah, you can see here there's a figure of him uh, yeah. kind of up on the wall behind us there, too. Um, yeah, I love these kind of creatures. And when Master of the Universe first came out, you know, like He-Man, Skeletor, Beast Man, like tons of cool, interesting characters... But it was Merman, the fish guy, Mm -hmm. that really appealed to me. And I still have my vintage (laughs) Merman. So this is the toy that came out in 1983 or 4. I had Uh, that one when I was that age. Yeah, I think 83 it was. Well, I would have just been born, so it was a hand-me-down that I got. But (laughs) Yeah, and like the vintage figure is still great. Like He's got that uh, He-Man swinging punch action. And my guy here, I, I don't know, I might still have his weapons, but they're tucked away somewhere, but he is missing that little piece on the front of his armor that you see there. <laughs> um, but yeah, otherwise, I'm glad that I still have him and he's still in decent shape. Um, I think it might be my earliest memory in my life. Um, at least one of them, because like, I, you know, I remember a few things from when I was young, but this is me my first traumatic one. Is I remember when He Man came out that year, and I wanted this thing more than anything. Like I'd seen it in the commercials, <laughs> or I'd seen it in the met in the consumers catalogs or Sears catalog. And I remember we lived in a, a base in Ontario it was called Base Borden. My dad was in the military, and it was uh, I don't even know how far from Toronto, a little ways. So it was when we were Christmas shopping. We went in town and we went into Toronto, which is a big city. And we were looking for Merman. My dad was going to try and find him for me for Christmas. And I remember, and again, I don't know, maybe even part of this was my dad fucking with me to, like, lead me off. Because when I think back, it's like, I don't think my dad would normally drag me around to find my most wanted yeah. present. <laughs> but, like, my memory was that we did. It was me and my brother Doug and my dad. We were driving around. We were looking all over for this thing and him saying, like, I'm sorry, Mike. They have the other guys. You know, I don't think they have it. And, again, this is fuzzy. This is the memory of, like, a four- or five-year-old. But my brother Doug has kind of backed me up, and we've talked about it since. Because I remember going into, it felt like a really weird little store. Almost like a little store you'd see in an airport that sells a couple of toys, but Mm -hmm. it's not really a toy store. So we went into this shop, which was kind of like, He-Man was the hottest thing in the world right now. And we were in this, like, little off-the-beaten-path shop that had some toys. And we found the merman. Yeah. 
And I remember my dad taking it up to the counter and saying, we've been looking for it everywhere to find this for this little guy. And the lady saying she wouldn't sell it to my dad because it was for ages like five and up or something. And oh. and I just, again, when I think back, I'm like, Did that, would that have really happened? But yeah. like, my brother remembers it, and he's two years older than me. Uh, he remembers it the same way. And I'm like, wow. did we leave that store because... You know, that lady wouldn't sell it to my dad, or maybe my dad put her up to that, and he bought it for me. Like, anyway, because I did eventually. I did get yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I don't know where he actually came from. But I've loved this character, this toy, yeah. so much. But let's be honest, the original He-Man figures were kind of short and stocky and mm -hmm. a little goofy. So when the classics came out, and they made this version, and like it's, it's like this, except just turned up to 11 and, and again like i mentioned with the ninja turtle figures it goes back to what how we felt they looked like yeah like when we were his, a kid he's like seaweed so sword, sword yeah. on the back there he's got his trident um his armor is just a little bit more extreme but the coolest thing about this guy is one thing that was kind of weird about merman like if you looked at the back of the package and the little mini comic books that came with he man is he looked like a fish guy he had yes. gill gilly face and even much as I love this toy, he looks kind of more like a cat. Yeah. Like, he doesn't really look like a merman. Definitely not like he looked on the pack of the packaging. So it was kind of like a walrus man situation where, you know, the two things didn't really gel. Mm -hmm. But with this classic figure, it was actually released in two different colors, and I have them both here. But these figures came with two different heads. Mm -hmm. So I also have this same head in green, which can be put on this guy's body, which I actually prefer because this is how he looked Yes. In the mini comics and stuff, and truer, a little closer to the cartoon version, and it's definitely fishier looking. And so, this figure with that head um, is really the perfect. And that's what I have on my shelf at home is that green figure with the green head. Yeah, it's the uh, perfect version. And of it's such, yeah, it's such a good figure. Yeah. The only reason I recently decided to change his head and put the cat version on it is because I do still like that cat version because yeah. it reminds me of the classic toy. And but you have the ultimate. I have this guy displayed with the other head. And I recently got the uh, Super 7 version of this toy where it's based strictly on the cartoon. Mm -hmm. And it's got the more fishier head, too. So I figure I've got a few versions of the fishy yeah. head. I'll go with the cat head on this guy. But, yeah, if I was really... If this was my only merman, I would definitely be displaying him with the fishier head. And I think it's basically the perfect toy. It's amazing, yeah. The, the, the trident has got... It, it's... I like the bone... like how it looks like the bone fingers on top of there, yeah. almost in a way. Uh, the detail on his everything on them are, they're so well done. Yeah, that's my favorite toy in my yeah. collection, I guess. Yeah. All right, so let's uh, let's. I'll get this other way and we'll okay. talk about yours. So my number one toy is also a He-Man mm -hmm. uh, classics, and it oh, well, <laughs> She-Ra. They, I, I don't really know if I should hold it up or just sit it like that, so you guys can sort of see a little yeah. bit of them while we talk. Uh, this is uh, She-Ra's uh, horse or whatever Swift you want, Wind. Swift Wind. I grew up on He-Man, but for some reason, I loved She-Ra. I have no idea what it was growing up. I loved She-Ra. But they were very girly toys. Yeah. And I know it's kind of hard to say this isn't a girly toy because <laughs> of the color scheme and everything on it. Yeah. But it is so mighty and powerful. Like, the veins in the legs here. It's a real, like, looks like that's a horse that's been, you know, really got muscle to him and stuff like that. Yeah. And I just really love Swiftwind. And you bought this for me. Yep. As a Christmas present. Uh, along with the She-Ra, who I just left at home for this one. Um, just because I do still love the She-Ra one, but I wanted to focus specifically on Swiftwind yeah. uh, in this. It's just such a great... Uh, I, it's just such a great character. A lot of the detail, the color is so vibrant, and uh, yeah, that's why it's my favorite one to have on my shelves at all time, and I just love it. Yeah, yeah, I love this too. I have this toy too, and I remember when I got this in the mail. Yeah, having to show my father-in-law. Well, you know, at the time, it was my girlfriend's dad. <laughs> yes, but I was like, yeah. yeah, this is the newest toy I got. Yeah, and he was just like, kind of shook his head, like, Let's yeah, because he would. Yeah, I mean, you. I guess you could make an argument that it's. A doll. Toy. It's a doll. It's got a lot of the same sort of colors that we now know are synonymous with, you know, the gay pride movement and stuff. Yeah. Um, but I just, I don't know why I liked She Ra so much, but I did. I really liked She Ra growing up. Well, she had, I, I think almost, you know, obviously I just said Merman was my favorite character, but I would almost argue that there was the better villains. Mm -hmm. Like, I loved Hordak's whole yeah, yeah. Horde that was like Mantena. I, he's close second to Merman and for Master of the Universe figures. Leech. Like, they were all really cool. And the original figures of these, and I had them, and I mean, 
it, it was one chunky uh, like chunk of plastic and he didn't move very much his hair was real hair mm. uh, same with even the she-ra toys back in the day they were the re- like fake real hair stuff so when these lines came out and i was like not only do i get a chance to get my favorite he-man characters again like and go oh this is this is what i had when i was a kid now i can say no this is this is how I always pictured Swiftwind when I played with She-Ra and Swiftwind. Yeah. So I, I, it's my favorite toy and the sentimental uh, you know value behind you getting it for me for Christmas. I just want to show the yeah. scale of him too. Like he's a big toy. Yeah. Like he, he works at the Master Universe. These are already good sized toys. These yeah. Are like good six or seven inch figures. And yeah, they 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 work when he's sitting in the, in the saddle there. It looks good. Yep. I have She-Ra usually sitting on him with a sword in the air, like she's. Get ready to charge battle. Like, <laughs> yeah, got, yeah. Behind me there, you can yeah. see I've got a Dora sitting yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I just love it. It's uh, my favorite figure. So, Yeah, and Swiftwind, for, again, for those who don't know, like he's not just some pony that she rides around. Like He's a character. He speaks, yep. and he's got a big masculine deep voice. <laughs> for, for such a feminine looking character, it's a very yeah. deep masculine voice. He's, yeah. he's not some wimp or some no. girly. Like, yeah, he's a tough tough horse and i always did love like i always loved battle cat and cringer but for some reason it was my favorite one was swift wind out of all three of them so yeah yeah all right all right well there we go thanks a lot for doing yeah that. thanks for having me on it was a lot of fun yeah i'm glad to finally have another guest yeah. here. We'll, we'll have to do this again sometime for sure we'll do our 10 worst toys <laughs> that, that could be interesting <laughs> once I, we I bought the we're upset about it. Yeah, 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 so yeah, it yeah it does happen yeah. yeah okay so uh yeah thanks a lot for watching uh sorry this was so long um, but yeah, appreciate it. So until next time. All right.